This is the Khmer Times News. My name is Paolo Bonini, and these are your headlines. Human trafficking has become a very contentious issue. Baby powder has been found to contain asbestos, and thousands flock to a mountain to avoid the end of the world. But first, more from our main story. In Sihanoukville, the high levels of violent crime and enforced labor at the hands of violent gangs have now caused local government to issue a stern warning. That is, businesses with forced labor will be shut down and offenders shall be arrested. The Priya Shionuk Provincial Administration has promised strict action against businesses that are involved in human trafficking. They said, Offenders will be arrested, severely punished, and businesses closed. This was amplified by the Priya Shionuk police chief, who said, Action has been taken, but authorities are now steadfast in wiping out this crime. The UK's Guardian newspaper has reported that hundreds of Taiwanese are among the untold numbers of captives who are being detained against their will and made to labour in telecom fraud networks. The traffickers, many of whom are associated with the triads, mostly target young Asians via social media, promising them well-paid jobs and lodgings in nations like Cambodia and Thailand. But when they arrive, their passports are stolen and they are frequently sold to different organisations and made to work in appalling conditions. Authorities in Taiwan claim that over 5,000 of their nationals have gone to Cambodia and have never returned. They have simply gone missing, assumed to be locked into a life so bleak it does not even offer them hope. Human trafficking is a hot topic this week, and you may wonder, how is it the victims are enslaved? We know they are lured into jobs on social media, but what is more convincing is when a known associate does the recruiting. Well, this week, one man has been arrested for the unbelievable crime of selling his own son's friends into slavery. The journey into slavery starts with an informal, friendly chat. What the victim does not know is the recruiter is spinning a web of lies and slowly enticing them into their own personal hell. This week, one such recruiter has been arrested and his trade is simply appalling. A man was in trapping and selling his own son's friends and then trafficking them to Cambodia to discover not a work life that would be beneficial, but a life of slavery. His victims were as young as 16 years old, and that is truly heartbreaking. He would develop close relationships with these boys and even offered to be their adopted father. He told four teenage boys that a friend of his based in Cambodia, was recruiting young workers and promised them salaries of $800 a month. He then arranged to smuggle the boys into Cambodia itself. But it's only when they reached the country did the four boys realize that they had been sold to work in a casino at the price of $2,400 each. There is also another angle to this crime, and that is that sometimes the easier profit is for the criminals to ransom the children they have stolen. One family paid 2600 and another three paid $10,000 each. The Ministry of Public Security told a meeting in Hanoi that thousands of people could have been smuggled to Cambodia and are being exploited, and rescuing them is exceedingly difficult. If there is any sadder price to pay of being a child and having your childhood stolen, I don't know what that is. 
There are some words that should never be seen in the same sentence, such as asbestos and babies. Well, this week, quite incredibly, asbestos was discovered in baby powder. The company involved is a global giant, and incredibly, they have been caught doing this before. An asbestos scare has halted all baby powder imports and distributions within the kingdom, and several brands, including major ones, have been at the forefront after asbestos was detected within them. The Ministry of Commerce said yesterday that 12 types of baby powder were subject to this official inquiry. The 12 products found to contain asbestos included Johnson's baby powder, Johnson's blossom powder, Denise kids powder, which were all made in Thailand, as well as Purine's baby powder made in Malaysia. With the names of such giants as Johnson's, Denise and Purine being on this list, it is simply quite staggering as to what standards these companies are using to ensure quality control. After all, they should be airtight. Their end user is babies. If having asbestos in baby powder is not enough to make your blood boil, then this should help you. In 2020, Johnson & Johnson, who earns approximately $82 billion a year, had to stop selling baby powder in the US after thousands of consumers issued a safety lawsuit against the company for selling talcum powder, despite knowing that it was contaminated with asbestos. To know that the same firm has allowed the exact same crime to happen again is not only frightening, but is also astonishing. This is truly a very bizarre story. It stretches the imagination to its limit. Seam Rip authorities this week had to disperse more than 15,000 people who had gathered at a farm near Kulon Mountains. The reason they had flocked to the mountain was to survive a flood that was about to engulf the entire world. In what is one of the most craziest stories of the year, thousands of people left their homes this week after a Facebook post stating the world was about to flood and sanctuary could be found at the Kulen Mountains. The post predicted that the entire world would be covered with water. All of the world, that is, apart from one farm. A farm that was owned by the man who posted the warning. He said it would only be his farm that would be spared from the tragedy. And quite amazingly, 15,000 people believed him and they made their pilgrimage to his farm and some of them took their children and the elderly. The district governor of Bante Sere district in Siem Rip province said, When someone says something on social media, people should carefully think whether or not it makes sense. It is incredible to see this number of people choosing to believe a lie like this. He also expressed his dismay in people leaving work and their homes with their children in tow for a reason that has absolutely no foundation in the real world. This rumour has even reached South Korea and some Cambodian migrants are believed to have started packing their bags to join their families on that farm at Kulen Mountain. A spokesman of the Ministry of Labour said, Believe me, if the world was going to flood, there would never be just one person's farmland saved. It would also be submerged underwater. And I personally think he has a solid point. And it seems now I have no need at all for that dove or that olive branch I bought. Seeing Rip's road to recovery from the pandemic is slow. 46% of Seeing Rip's tourist businesses 
are still closed. And although there is an increase in tourists, it is a shadow of what it once was a few years ago. Data from the Ministry of Tourism confirms that as of July, out of 739 hotels, 520 are open, 190 have stopped trading, and 29 have permanently closed. The news for restaurants, though, seems to be very different. The ministry quotes of 2,500 restaurants, over 2,000 of them are open. The Under Secretary of State and spokesman for the Ministry of Tourism says that during the pandemic, Siem Reap was the worst affected province, with 90% of businesses within the province suspended or closed. COVID quite simply devastated the industry. But there is hope. There is a gradual increase in international tourists, but still more than half of businesses are not yet operational due to the small number of tourists who are visiting. There are currently about 5,000 international tourists visiting Cambodia across the country, with about seven to 800 per day in Siem Rip. And that is a fraction of the heaving masses that once enveloped the city. It has been quoted, the numbers will not return to normal for potentially another two years. And now it's time to look at our sports news. It is not often that a team scores nine goals in a single match, but this week that almost impossible feat actually happened. So now let's see who it was as we take a brief look at the Premier League. And here are those results, and there's nothing really original here. Chelsea won, Man U won, and Arsenal got an incredibly important win. But it was, in fact, Liverpool that managed to get nine past Bournemouth. And as we trip on over to the table itself, we can see why Arsenal will be grateful for those three points. It keeps them at the number one slot. It's time to have a look ahead and see what the weather has in store for us next week. And here is that weather, and it is quite simply a atrocious it's bad uh, towards the end of the week and it gets worse at the weekend going into next week we can still he see the humidity heading up into the 90s it's going to be appalling but you're not the first guess what is the oldest record of rain that we have would it surprise you to know that it's nearly three billion years old scientists have discovered rock that clearly shows the pattern of raindrops. This has been the Khmer Times News. You can contact myself at the studio by mailing us at ktnewsstudio at gmail.com. Please do subscribe and comment and stay up to date with all the breaking news by following us on both Facebook and Telegram. This has been Paolo Bonini, and that was the week that was. I'll see you next Saturday for your weekly roundup.